Meet Lisa Roberts. She's a sought-after tastemaker who calls trend-setting designers her friends. She started her career as an architect, then became a product designer. You can find her designs in all the top department stores. Her first book, Antiques of the Future, was a huge success. Now she's working on her second book, Design Pop. Lisa's constantly on the lookout for the coolest and best in product design. For Lisa, it's fun, it's exciting, it's life. This is My Design Life. A big part of my design life is my participation in CoLab, a group of design professionals at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. We have helped the museum amass over 2,000 objects from around the world. This year, CoLab is celebrating its 40th anniversary, and we are organizing an exhibit to showcase our most iconic pieces, like Charles and Ray Eames' rocker and Karim Rashid's chess set. Going behind the scenes of a major museum's exhibit is a rare opportunity. The exhibit is first drawn out on a computer with a 3D model. Each object gets a custom-built display. The install itself is never seen by the public. A team of specially trained art handlers take their job very seriously, bringing in each object one at a time with the utmost of care. Colab is hosting a grand celebration for the opening of this exhibit. And as part of that, Maria and the museum's head pastry chef are creating a tribute cake. Maria's challenge is to recreate these intricately and beloved designs out of chocolate. So Maria, our goal here is yeah. to find things that you think you can make out of chocolate. More than just objects, this room is filled with stories. Take, for example, the George Nelson ball clock, whose idea was conceived during a dinner party. The wine was flowing, and all anyone can say for sure is that the next morning, there was a napkin sketch of the ball clock. As cool as it is, I doubt it could be made out of chocolate. What about well, the clock? I think that might be difficult to put on the cake. Well, maybe it could be like, Put on the side, maybe. Well, here's a real icon, the artichoke lamp. Poole Henningsen's artichoke lamp is a classical masterpiece. It has 72 overlapping copper leaves, so that there is no angle from which you ever see the light source. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you can make that one out of chocolate. That might take me a couple years. I love the typewriter. Right, the Valentine typewriter. The Valentine typewriter by Atora Satsas has become even more interesting now that the last typewriter manufacturer has closed its doors. It was designed in 1969 to be the anti-machine machine, which meant it didn't look like any of its predecessors. Typewriters at that point came in cast iron housings. This one was made out of plastic, so it was light and portable. And bright red. How pop is that? I love the artichoke lamp and the Valentine typewriter. But I'm looking around and there are so many chairs that would look great made out of chocolate. Well, you know, I think a lot of designers love to do chairs. Yeah. It's one of the most complicated projects to design. When you think about a chair, you have to design it for a wide range of people. A lot of these chairs have innovation in terms of new materials or new ways of making them. Oh, the Honey Pop chair. You know, that's made out of paper. It comes flat. Like one of those party balls, right? Exactly. But this is structural paper. Somebody sits in it for the first time to give their impression of their butt. It opens like an accordion and accepts the impression of the body that first sits on it. The museum acquired it with the designer's own butt impression. Hey. Oh, there's the zigzag chair. I don't think I've ever seen that in real life. Oh, that chair was one of our most expensive purchases. This is one of the original prototypes of the zigzag chair, and it's priceless. But there's a mass-produced version that is still in production today. What appears to be four simple planks is in fact a complex system using cantilevers that are dovetailed at the seams. I love that. So what's up with the chairs? 
The Charles Hi. Eames Rocker, this is an absolute classic. Charles and Ray Eames are the king and queen of mid-century modern design. They were a married couple who pioneered the use of molded plastics, plywood, and fiberglass in furniture. This rocker is an icon. The Eames Rocker is still in production today, though it's not made of fiberglass, it's made of plastic. Uh, you think you could make that? Maybe. All that wire work down the bottom might be a little challenging, but I think I could do it. Do you think you could make that? That's the egg chair. I have one of those in my house. The egg chair was designed by Arnie Jakobsen for the Royal Hotel in Copenhagen. It encases you, so it gives you a bit of privacy in a public space. This is How High the Moon by Shiro Kuramata. I remember that was in the uh, Japanese design exhibition that was at the museum. It, it's um, nickel-plated steel museum. Is it outdoor? At the price of that chair, you would not want to put it outside. Now, the cross-check armchair, I use that in my first book, and that's Frank Gehry. The cross-check armchair designed by Frank Gehry was inspired by the woven construction of apple crates. He used to play with them as a child. The name of the chair, cross-check, comes from an ice hockey term, a favorite sport of Frank Gehry's. The uh, Up 5 chair, it's by Gaetano Pesci. It was made in 1969. The Up 5 chair is one of the collection's most unusual pieces. At first glance, what looks like a whimsical chair is in fact a woman's body with breasts and legs. It's tied to a ball-shaped ottoman, symbolizing a ball and chain. You figure it out. Can I sit in the chair? You cannot <laughs> even touch these chairs. It's a museum. It, though. It's the boobs, isn't it? It's the boobs. But it's a little weird that we're in a room full of chairs that you can't sit in. Maria, do you think you found enough ideas here to make things? I think so. It's going to be challenging, but I think I got some good ideas. I'm really counting on Maria. Her cake is going to be the centerpiece of this party, so she better come through. Coming up, Lisa B. and Maria test Zolo way out of their comfort zone. And later, can Maria pull famous chairs from chocolate? Ah, Maria! This week, we are planning Colab's 40th anniversary party. And Maria is joining pastry chef Scott Stolp to make the centerpiece of the event. But I still have a book to finish, so Maria's cake will just have to wait. We're headed to New York to talk to Byron Glazer, one of the creators of Zolo, which I think will be perfect for my chapter on color. What began in a tiny Chelsea studio with a dream and no money became a mold-breaking toy company dedicated to spreading playfulness in every corner of life. We wanted to create something that would involve children, but that they'd have to use their imagination. The classic Zolo series are a group of shapes made of wood, plastic, and fabric that can be assembled to create different imaginative figures. So I have a question. Okay. The idea behind Zolo originally, was it an updated version of Mr. Potato Head? You know, I think the thing that, the, that it has eyes is one of the things that makes people think of Mr. Potato Head. And not to diminish Mr. Potato, because I love him, right. but he, you know, he's always a potato, he's always a mister, and he's always a head. And Zolo is really kind of whatever you can imagine it to be. Right. This is our newest one, which is all black and white and chalkboard material. So you can draw on it, you can use rubber bands or puppy paint, and we use yarn, and you can write, and then you can erase and redo, and so. This is really cool. It's a design within a design. Zolo created the parts, but the child designs the toy. Zolo also has a new line of baby toys. Yeah, oh we, my god, this is so adorable. This is our, it's a stacking toy, it's a boa constrictor. So it has all the animals inside. The bird, the cow, the pig, you know. They're all, and then the, the, Oh, that's adorable. So, and you can I'm not so sure about a toy made for a baby named after a snake that could swallow a baby. 
So <laughs> these are little. Are they yeah, and oh. some little baby. They need, they need to start working out. They're lazy, those little babies. Yeah. Well, so, thank you so much. Thank you. Zolo is almost certainly book worthy, but before I put it in, I need to test it. And I think I know just the way. Oh, great. I guess that means me again. We're back from New York, and now it's all about the Colab 40th anniversary party. Chef Scott has done his part. Now we're just waiting on Maria to create the decorations. So today I'm working on two of the chairs I chose from the exhibit. Making objects out of chocolate is tough. Making famous works of art out of chocolate is even tougher. Plus, Lisa just threw me a curveball, or should I say, a curvy chair. The familiar chair is not in the exhibit, but I wanted Maria to make it because it's one of my all-time favorites. It's made by the Campana Brothers out of 500 meters of red cotton rope. It may look chaotic, but in fact, it's a highly structured chair. I'll start with the Vermilla chair. Made out of rope and steel. I'm gonna make it out of chocolate and I'm gonna use a little bit of metal too. All right, so this is chocolate, modeling chocolate. So this is pretty much like Play-Doh. So these are little pieces of aluminum tubing that look just like the legs of that chair. The fun part's gonna be when I try to use this thing to make chocolate rope. All right. Moment of truth. Awesome. It really worked out well. It looks just like the real thing. Next, Gaetano Pesci's Up 5 chair. And it should be relatively easy to sculpt. It's pretty much like a sexy mama. She's got big hips, big boobs. You kind of can tell, right? Looks great. Next, zigzag. It's basically a chocolate board. Hmm. It's too thick, I didn't make enough. I think I got a little overconfident with the first two chairs. It's a little rough looking right now, but it stands. But you're not gonna see it until it's on the cake. Sorry guys. I don't have time to make more chocolate now because Lisa Roberts wants me to go test Zolo. What the hell? I wanna put Zolo in my book, but I wanna test its claim that it can inspire creativity in anyone. So I'm sticking it in the hands of some of the most creative people I know, Lisa B. and Maria. Oh, and a dozen kids. Ready, set, go! Woo! Let's go, kids, in! Go on in, build! 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 I can't believe all these kids are in my house. I am going to have a massive headache when they're gone. I am so surprised that these kids are so quiet. I thought they would be going nuts, running around my house and wrecking everything. But Zolo has like made them very quiet. Go Zolo. All parents should have this toy. Now it's time to see what Zolo a go, -Go can really do. Can you use that? No, you gotta trade me something. Um, trade me something. Here, how about that blue one? This blue one right here. My teacher is like a monster eater that is very crazy and has a very hairy back. My creature is a singing monster. My creature is a piece of ham and its body is shaped with squiggly. I don't really know what my creature is, but I like to, um, it was fun to build. Winner! <laughs> That's the best you can do? <laughs> yeah! Zolo did exactly what it claimed. It captivated and inspired everyone. It's definitely going in the book. The best part about playing with kids? when you give them back to their parents. Oh my God. Coming up, a last minute deadline means it's all hands on deck for two major photo shoots. And it's party time. Was Maria and Scott able to capture 40 years of collab with an amazing cake? Bring out the surprise. Stick around.
This week, my team and I are pulling double duty as we plan a party for Colab and continue working on my book. And I have to admit, I'm flipping out a little bit because we've put the book on the back burner and we still have so many more photographs to take. So Kelly came over to take some pictures. We're starting with the Ripple Chair, designed in 2002 by Rana Rod. It's reminiscent of the traces of seawater left on the sand, and I want Kelly to bring that out in the photograph. Good. In addition, a vest was designed for the chair in 2006 by the fashion house of Isi Miyake. Yes, a vest was designed for a chair. I don't understand who takes the time to make a vest for a chair, although these people did. And to drive home that point, I'm going to bring in a model to model the vest. This is totally ridiculous. The chair's vest. I'm wearing the chair's clothes. Poor chair is sitting there naked. Can you fix your collar? Yeah. This collar? Yeah. Take a step back. Good. Right there. Maybe someday we can take a picture of me that's flattering. <laughs> Have I ever mentioned how much I hate being photographed? And this was sprung on me. Maria, you're the best. I have an idea. Oh, I like that. <laughs> uh, not too high, though. Let me see your eyes and your nose. Good, good, good. Am I done? Yes, you are done. The final spread is going to be really cool. It's going to show the vest on the chair, the vest on a human, and then the chair naked. As if I didn't have enough on my mind, my agent called and said he needed more promotional shots right away. Shooting with Lisa is going to be very difficult. Whenever there's too many cooks in the kitchen, it's not always the best thing. Don't forget my right side's my better side. Your right side's your better side? Are you serious? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the shot with your bare feet. I could take my shoes off. I like doing that too. No, you look cute. Guys, what do you think? <laughs> Ooh, I get it. Thumbs up. Okay. Perfect. That's nice. That's it. That's the shot. Kelly did a great job. Now it's party time. Colab's anniversary event is 40 years in the making, and it's attracted the who's who in the Philadelphia design world. Like designers, collectors, and all-around tastemakers. To say I'm nervous is a bit of an understatement, but the exhibit's finished. And people are loving it. The guests are arriving and Lisa's out front mingling. And I'm in the back room frantically putting the finishing touches on the cake with Chef Scott. It's crooked. Oh, it's crooked. Ah, Maria. Oh crap, I was just trying to fix it. What are you doing? How am I going to fix this when I have to get changed and be out there for Lisa's speech? Thank you. I'm Lisa Roberts, and I've been a member of Colab for 19 years. And during that time, I have seen a tremendous amount of change. We've been really fortunate to be able to have a brand new gallery that's almost seven times the size of our original gallery. I'm really proud to be a part of Colab, and our new gallery and this exhibit are terrific. Now it's time for Maria to shine. Maria is my research assistant. Maria is also a chocolate maker. <laughs> and she has been working with the pastry chef from the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And they've been working for weeks on a surprise. Bring out the surprise! Oh my God, where's the cake? Wow, the cake looks great. And the chocolate chairs look like the real thing. The Vermilia by the Campana Brothers, the Zigzag Chair by Garrett Rietveld, the Up Five Chair by Gaetano Pesci, 
and the rocking chair by Charles and Ray Eames. Good job, Maria. Now, it's time to celebrate. Where's my drink? Here's to 40 great years of collab and to 40 more. For more information about the products you've seen, go to mydesignlife.tv.